I don't see anyone making a better build for this game. Well, I hope he isn't watching this video then. Welcome back. Today we're going to be fixing the unbeatable build by Prez. In this video, I'm going over the best build of 2023. First, for your primary weapon, you're going to be using Moog Sacred Spear. I'm going to briefly cover this since I'm sure a lot of people know or might have saw my last video, but this weapon is completely broken. And in my opinion, this is the absolute best weapon in the entire game. Not only for the damage it does, but also for the lack of skill this thing requires. For your headpiece, use the white mask. This will give you a 10% damage buff when blood loss is triggered. And you can trigger this easily by using Seppuku, but it really triggers a lot when you use the Sacred Spears Ash of War. For your chest, and this is really only if you're using jumping attacks, use Raptor's Black Feathers. This is because you gain a 10% damage buff from jumping attacks. And for the hands and legs, you can really just use anything you want. There isn't anything crazy you can use here in this to help damage. But if you really feel like you need something, you can use the Royal Remains set. This will passively restore your HP for you, so whenever you're hurt, you'll just get health back but let's begin with talismans and this is where stuff changes in your first slot you need to run the claw talisman this is because this is the most redundant talisman for your mimic tier once i've covered all the talismans though i'll explain what that means in the next three slots use the shard of alexander to increase the damage of your ash of war the lord of blood's exaltation to enhance damage when blood loss is triggered and finally the fire scorpion charm since moog sacred spear does fire damage this will increase the damage of its physical attack but mainly it's ash of war now for this build we actually use five talismans and the fifth one that we're using is Shabriri's Woe, which upon your first inspection is literally the standout worst talisman in the entire game. I switch out the claw talisman for Shabriri's Woe. Once it's on, I walk into the boss fight, and as soon as I possibly can, I call on my Mimic Tear. Once it's in, I heal because the Mimic Tear takes away your health, but after that, I immediately take off Shabriri's Woe. So in my approved build, we're going to be level 150, as he was level 600 something in his video. So we're going to have 60 figure, as always, that is the most important figure breakpoint to reach we're gonna have 11 mind that's just our starting mind don't need to level that up at all as we're not using that many buffs we're gonna have 17 endurance and that is so we have enough weight to get 51 poise and to medium roll we're gonna have 10 strength and that's just going to increase our physical scaling on our weapon we're gonna have 15 dexterity which is actually going to be 20 when boosted by the remillicence prosthesis and that's because that's going to also give us more physical scaling on our weapon. Now we're going to have base, intelligence, and faith. And then 99 arcane. Now 80 arcane is the soft cap, but because the scavenger curve sword scales so well with a cult, and because bleed also scales with a cult, it is worth going to 99 before you level up your points in strength and dexterity. For the armor, we have the white mask, raptor's black feathers, tree sentinel gauntlets, and tree sentinel greaves. That's going to give us 51 poise while giving us a 10% damage boost for jumping attacks, as well as a 10% damage boost when bleed procs. For our talismans, we're going to have Claw Talisman, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Millicent's Prosthesis, and Rotten Wing Sword Insignia. The Rotten Wing Sword Insignia and Millicent's Prosthesis are going to give us stacking continuous attack boosts. Lord of Blood's Exaltation is going to give us a 20% damage boost when bleed is procced. And Claw Talisman is going to give us jumpy attack damage will be boosted by 15%. Now for the Great Rune, we have Mog's Great Rune. And the reason because of that is because we are using the Mimic tier, just like in the video. And the Mimic tier will be boosted when Mog's Great Rune is activated. 
For the crystal tiers, we have thorny crack tier and stone barb crack tier. Thorny crack tier is going to give us a continuous attack boosts, just like the talismans. And the stone barb crack tier is going to give us more poise damage. The spirit ashes, we are going to be using the mimic tier. And for blosses immune to bleed, we're going to be using stormhawk deeth. Now, the reason we aren't using Mogwin's sacred spear is because, as I've shown in my DPS test, it doesn't actually out DPS the scavenger's curse sword for the ashes of war on our weapons we're going to be using seppuku on both of our scavenger's curse sword and those are going to be infused with cults i never like to tell you but here are the soft caps if you need them so the soft caps that he's shown was wrong so these are the correct soft caps 